Hello friends, welcome to yet another intriguing edition of Rahul Sarvansh Biology. Today I will bring you a very exciting topic known as the COVID-19 Remdesivir Hyperreal. So we will be talking in depth about the consequences of taking Remdesivir, about its antiviral activity and how does it live up to its hype. Is it really that good or is it gonna fail in the clinical trials? So let's get down to business. Before we start with our mechanism of action, I would like to tell you again that WHO has declared the SARS-CoV-2 as a global pandemic and more than 4 lakh people have been affected by it and more than 8,000 people have lost their lives. So in this case of extreme crisis, how does any drug come up and take down SARS-CoV-2? Pharmacologically, let's get down to the characteristics of Remdesivir. Its manufacturer is Gilead Sciences in United States. It was also granted the orphan drug status on March 23, 2020. But the orphan drug status was again withdrawn on 25th March of 2020. Orphan drug status is awarded, is bestowed to those specific drugs which are developed against a specific calamity, a specific disease calamity. And if you produce a drug and if any company produces a drug against such rare diseases, the profit making capability gets reduced a lot, it gets plummeted, so thereby it needs assistance from the government. So it was awarded the orphan drug status and then the orphan drug status was again withdrawn on 25th March of 2020. It's also known as Captisol enabled Remdesivir, RDV is the acronym for Remdesivir. It is also known as GS5734, it is not a drug right now. It is still under clinical trials, that's why it's an experimental name given GS5734. It's under phase 3 clinical trials against SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. It's under phase 2 clinical trial for combating Ebola virus, which causes Ebola hemorrhagic fever. It's also known as 1' cyanosubstituted adenosine nucleotide analog. It's a broad spectrum antiviral drug. It has got a broad spectrum antiviral activity like against non-segmented negative strand RNA viruses like Ebola virus respiratory syncytial virus, Nipah virus and also it has got antiviral activity against SARS-CoV-1 which is a positive strand RNA virus non-segmented. SARS-CoV-2 is being tested means it has got some kind of antiviral activity against the RNA dependent RNA polymerase present in the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It has also been found to be effective against one of the other coronaviruses known as MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Virus or Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome causing coronavirus. Right now, it's a phosphoramidate prodrug, meaning that it is derived from phosphoric acid. It's a conjugate base of phosphoramidic acid. Right. What happens? It's it's a prodrug, means it has to be converted into remdesivir TP, means RDV TP, means remdesivir triphosphate form by the cellular nucleotide or nucleoside kinases. It has to be transformed, it has to be converted into the triphosphate form by cellular nucleotide kinases. After getting or after being converted into triphosphate form, it can act as a substrate and can get attached to the RNA, to the elongating RNA chain which is catalyzed by the RNA polymerase. In this case, RNA dependent RNA polymerase in cases of RNA viruses. It is very, very efficient in case of RNA viruses. Now, no significant inhibition has been found in the clinical trials against the human RNA polymerase 2, that is the eukaryotic RNA polymerase 2 or the mitochondrial human mitochondrial RNA polymerase, right? So we are quite safe while using remdesivir under the stipulated doses, effective dose. Now, mechanism of action. In case of SARS-CoV-1, which had caused an epidemic, non -pa not pandemic in 2003, there are non-structural proteins NSP7, NSP8 and NSP12. NSP12 is the main RDRP. RDRP stands for RNA dependent RNA polymerase in the RNA viruses as per the classification. right? So NSP12 has got low processivity on its own. If you look at the Baltimore classification, there will be a various classified viruses. And as per the NSP12, you have in SARS-CoV-2, only NSP12, if we isolate it, it has got low processivity. The factor of processivity I have already talked in my previous videos where I have in-depth explanation I have given about the replication of DNA. The processivity means how enabled 
a specific polymerase is to tether to the strand to the template strand how you are able to coax or tether to the template strand and thereby you are able to cause the synthesis of the daughter strand to keep on synthesizing the daughter strand you need to be able to firmly hold the template strand because you have to do it that strand and then you are going to synthesize it so that's what possessivity is all about so in eukaryotes we need beta clamp clamp loader so here in this case in case of virus RNA virus is specifically SARS-CoV-1, which is a non-segmented positive strand RNA virus. Only NSP2 has been found to be having pretty low processivity. But in any study, it has not been found that it's a trimer made up of NSP7 and NSP8. But in case of MERS-CoV, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome causing coronavirus, the NSP8 and NSP2 go hand in hand. They form a dimer and they go hand in hand. What happens is if we administer Remdesivir triphosphate or remdesivir as a pro-drug it becomes triphosphate gets activated in the cytoplasm then it attaches with the RNA chain the RNA dependent RNA polymerase recognizes it as a substrate it cannot really differentiate between the real substrate real NTP and the RDVTP which is also an NTP in this case so it mimics the substrate it gets incorporated into the growing RNA chain and what happens is the RNA chain gets terminated but the termination is not an immediate process because it has also got a 3 prime OH group this is specific remdesivir triphosphate as an activated drug from the remdesivir pro drug it allows up till or until 3 nucleotide addition after this RT, RDV remdesivir triphosphate has got directly attached to the elongating RNA chain still it allows for 3 nucleotide addition and then after the 3 nucleotide addition that is I plus 3 where I stands for the place or the position where the remdesivir triphosphate got attached 3 more nucleotides the normal nucleotides would be attached and then the RNA synthesis would be stalled right would be RNA synthesis would have an arrest it would be arrested or stalled then there is one another pathway known as the delayed chain termination process. In delayed chain termination process, what happens is due to the incorporation of remdesivir triphosphate, depending on the dose, what happens? The inhibitor is induced structural changes in dsRNA. Since remdesivir is not a real substrate, so its structure, its conformation is a little bit different. So it would allow, it would induce a structural change after the formation of the double stranded RNA via the RNA dependent RNA polymerase and since structural changes have been induced this leads to conformational instability in the double stranded RNA then what's the consequence of ramification is it prevents the alignment what kind of alignment productive alignment useful alignment of the primer and the incoming nucleotide because nucleotides cause the SN2 nucleophilic attack which has also been explained in my previous video of replication and transcription initiation and replication initiation so the primer template the primer must be aligned properly proper conformational alignment of the primer has to happen it's mandatory for the upcoming nucleotide to take place because of the orientation factor now if the orientation is not proper it cannot cause a proper substitution to nucleophilic attack and thereby the phosphodiester linkage cannot just form because of the conformational misalignment then why it is called delayed delayed because one of the specific pathways is the primer template repositioning the RNA dependent RNA polymerase RDRP would again try to reposition the template and the primer but it would fail to do so because the phosphodiester bond has already been formed by remdesivir triphosphate activated drug then again it would try to backtrack backtracking mechanism the RNA dependent RNA polymerase would try to backtrack and find eventually it would lead to delayed chain termination process one thing is if the enzyme and primer reattach again in some studies it has been found that if a fraction of a primer again binds to the enzyme it kind of goes on to complete the process of RNA replication via RDRP now NSP14 NSP14 is again an intriguing protein here it's a viral exonuclease but this viral exonuclease is not that efficient to know or to detect the RDVTP or the remdesivir triphosphate activated drug 
because it detects all other anomalies like we have the endonucleases or sorry the exonucleases the prokaryotes have the exonucleases dna pol 1 5 to 3 prime exonuclease and 3 to 5 prime exonuclease dna pol 3 again it has got 3 to 5 prime exonuclease activity so it would backtrack and again check the abnormal nucleotides and take those nucleotides out and again start the synthesis the same way nc14 is a viral exonuclease in case of viral rna replication which is quite similar to the dna replication in the prokaryotes but this nsp14 has not been able to completely or you can say directly know or detect the rdv triphosphate it cannot recognize completely with utmost you can say precision or accuracy the remdesivir triphosphate thereby it cannot really take remdesivir triphosphate out all the time and restart the synthesis but in some cases it does and then this remdesivir fails as a prodrug or as an activated drug the remdesivir triphosphate rdv tp in studies it has also been found that if you knock out this nsp14 from the virus then the remdesivir triphosphate efficacy it increases by many folds now why is it not able to judge maybe because of the three additional nucleotide attachment it's just a hypothesis not proven maybe because of a three nucleotide attachment after the remdesivir triphosphate attachment so it may have problem in really finding out because, it, because it's too similar and again you have three proper nucleotide attachments so it may have difficulty in recognizing the remdesivir triphosphate activated drug with complete accuracy and precision so that's about it it's under phase 3 clinical trial to be used it may be able to cross this barrier and it may be affiliated by food and drug administration usa and it may be able to be uh, become a potent drug in order to cure the covid-19 patients but that's about it that's all the conceptual prowess you needed to comprehend this video if you like this lecture kindly hit the like button and do not hesitate to post your queries in the comment section below i have given the link also of my facebook page you can directly contact me personally via messenger app and i'll respond to your queries as soon as possible and do share this video with your friends and if you have liked the content kindly subscribe to my channel rahul's advanced biology thanks a lot see you soon